You like Papa's Rickenbacker? Is it loud? Is it growly? Does it growl like you? Mm. Today I'm going to share with you the best way I've found to record that signature Rickenbacker bass sound. I'm going to tell you that trick in a second. The first thing I'm going to do is to do a little shootout between two methods of recording the bass. One is miking this bass amp here with a microphone. The other one is with a direct injection into a preamp. Let's listen to the AB sound test now, then I'll share my trick. Wow, I'm, I'm pretty surprised to find out that they both sound pretty good. Maybe you could tell me which one you prefer in the comments. Depending on what song I'm recording, I might use one or the other, but I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with both sound checks. The trick that I was talking to you about, how to get that Rickenbacker signature sound, that growl, that bite, is essentially just an EQ, a basic EQ. And the magic happens when you bump up those three specific frequency ranges. At 100 Hz, you have the meat, the bassy part, which I guess is for all basses. And at 1000 Hz, at 1K, you get that signature gonk gonk of the Rickenbacker, which I love and really pierces through a mix. And at 2.7K, you get that recognizable Rickenbacker growl. And I use those three frequencies as sort of a triple fader on the bass, depending on what I what the mix needs. Does it need more gong? Does it need more growl? Does it need more meat? And that's how I mix my Rickenbacker bass to get that signature sound. It's really like split it into three things and I dial them up or down depending on what's needed for that particular song in the mix. For today, I chose the direct injection and I'm gonna put it in the context of a one minute mini song that I just created. If you like music vlogs and a little dose of inspiration, please subscribe, we're gonna do a lot more.